Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Albert, Editor-in-Chief of Modern Machine Shop Magazine. Welcome to our webinar sponsored by Symmetron. Thank you for joining us. Our topic this afternoon is how ultra-high performance roughing strategies are changing the way toolmakers gain a competitive advantage by reducing manufacturing costs, shortening operation times, and extending tool life. We'll discuss the challenges involved in optimizing a tool path for roughing and the solutions now available that promise to increase productivity and performance. We'll also cover the implementation of these solutions and their value in accurately calculating the cost of machining operations and cutting tools. The goal here is to learn about saving time and money and roughing your cores, cavities, and components. Our presenter today is Alon Luster. Assisting him will be Harry Schreideron. Alon Luster is the NC technology export for 3D Systems, Symmetron E. A graduate of the Technion Israeli Institute of Technology, he has a degree in mechanical engineering specializing in robotics and CNC. With 30 years of machining experience at Symmetron, he is now a member of the International Sales and Marketing Department. Alon has field machining experience in technologies such as direct milling, five-axis machining, high-speed finishing and roughing, as well as micro-milling. Harry Schreideron is Director of Engineering for Symmetron eSoftware 3D Systems. So as we listen to the presentation, please feel free to share your questions with us by typing them in the questions pane on your control panel. We'll answer those questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to view the entire program online later. So thanks again for taking time to be with us for the live program. Here's Alon to start things off. Thank you, Mark, and uh, thank you, everybody, for joining this uh, webinar about ultra-high performance roughing for toolmakers. If you haven't heard it by now, Simatron Group was acquired last February by 3D Systems. 3D Systems now provides the most advanced and comprehensive 3D digital design and fabrication solutions available today, including 3D printers, software solutions, and more. So let us jump in into the roughing process. And as you may know, the roughing process is a significant portion of every parts machining, especially in the mold and die industry. It can take hours and days. On mold plates, roughing time will be typically 50% up to 80% of overall machining process. On mold core cavities, a little less because of the finishing operations, and here the roughing time will be 20 to 40% of overall machining process. This means we speak here of a lot of machining in the roughing stages, and actually many shops have dedicated machines just for roughing. So what is the roughing pain for us, for mold makers? We want to achieve faster roughing, but it has to be safe. So the challenge is that there is no time to reliably optimize the tool pass of each one-of-a-kind mold with its specific complex shapes. It is not production, it is a production, but of single components. So the challenge is very high here. If we look on the right uh, picture of the tool, this is a typical tool in the mold making industry, an insert tool. And it utilizes only a small portion of the tool length with the inserts. This means a typical tool pass here will be of a small down step and large side steps. And for that usage, the current tool pass is geared just for that and it's real fine for that. But if we would like 
to increase the AP, the downstep, in order to get higher material removal rate at the stage of the roughing, how can we increase the cut lengths? How can the tool pass be suitable for that? So this is a challenge for the geometry of the tool pass. If we look at the typical roughing process tool pass, it will contain unequal tool loads which are marked here in red areas. Those are unavoidable and are part of a typical tool pass every day, every minute. But these are just fine. Those cause some tool wear and different uh, loads on the tool that may shorten the tool life. And the people, the operators at the shop floor, they compromise by slowing the feeds, which will even lower the material removal rate and elongate the roughing time. Some typical examples, for example, the slotting. This is happening whenever we start a pocket or a, a layer in roughing. Getting into corners can be sharp or rounded. Anyhow, the tool is like slotting at that area, and this means higher loads on the tool. So what is the 3D system Simatron E volumeal solution to approach those matters? A reliable high material removal rate tool pass with a huge downstep and ha very high feed rate. In this picture, we're seeing now, um, we will see a movie from a high-speed camera. Harry, could you click that, please? Thank you. So we are now about to see a slow-motion cut of a solid carbide tool we can see the shape of the uh, chip is a very long chip and narrow, which is the opposite of what we are used to with the traditional roughing, where the chip is, is low and wide. And the chip over here is very hot. It takes all the heat with it, and therefore it changes its color from brown metal to the to the dark blue or pink as it goes through the air. Thank you, Harry. So the tool pass, in order to support this very long downstep or AP, has to be all rounded and all those red area had to disappear, otherwise the tool will break immediately. So the whole shape of the tool pass is now very different. We have to support a constant sidestep, but yet optimize the feed rates non continuously in order to support the constant loads on the tool. And that will give us very long tool life. The picture on the left is the amount of chips removed by just one solid carbide out of mold steel, not aluminum, mold steel. So this is a huge amount of chips with just one tool. Speaking of the high material removal rate, what does it mean? We are seeing here a graph where the horizontal area shows the tool diameter in millimeters from 16 to 20 up to 55 millimeters. And the vertical axis is the MRR, the material removal rate uh, measured in cubic millimeters per minute. The blue line is the traditional tool pass and we see numbers go between 38 and down up to 200 millimeters cubic per minute. The green line resembles the volume mill strategy cutting where the numbers go from 300 up to 600 
which means 10, 15 times more for the same diameter. If we look, for example, on the 20 millimeter diameter with the traditional, we are on 38. And with the solid carbide, we are on 562. This is amazing for the same diameter. Let us now have a look at example number one, which is a roughing of a mold core. The material is mold steel uh, with a standard hardness, 32 rock we'll see. Um, and the part size is uh, 500 by 500 millimeters and uh, about 200 millimeters high. Uh, the traditional roughing process for that will be a series of rough and re-rough procedures resulting in this shape of the stock. For that particular job, it took this customer about 11 hours and a half to reach this stock status. Doing the same with the volume mill process, I would separate the process into two stages. The first stage is the volume mill operation. Just one operation of volume mill will bring us the stock to this shape of very, very large down steps. And of course, this stock is not finished and not ready for semi-finishing or finishing. So this is just the first stage in the roughing volume mill process. The second stage will be the complementary real rough set of operations to bring the volume mill stock to the final stock of rough. The total process for the volume mill, as I described now, will be less than six hours. So this means we are saving here about 50% of the time, which is a very impressive number. Let us now look at a comparison of simulations of both operations in parallel, okay, on the screen as simulations. Left side is the traditional process. Right side is the solid carbide volume mill process, start to end. Both start at the same time. And we are seeing now on the left side the traditional process with the very small down step and the large side step. And on the right side already the green area shows us that the volume mill has been completed and now the complementary rear rough operations take place. The green clock shows us the time. Once the right side operation is complete, which is very, very soon coming, the clock will change from grid green to red as this time is now a waste of time. So actually, as we speak, at this moment now, the right operation with the volume mill process is done. And from now on, it's a waste of time on our machines on the left side, still crunching the, the chips with the small down step and the large side step as traditional process. This will take some more while, and I just can skip that and not waste our time. And maybe, Harry, you can just take the slider almost to the end. OK, never mind. Next is the movie of the real cut of that component. So again, over here we will see now a real cut movie uh, done at uh, ISCAR showroom. And um, this is cutting that specific customer's plate, as we have seen with a 20 millimeter solid carbide tool with seven flute. The coolant is air. Cutting velocity of a VC is 200 meter per minute, which is very fast. The chip thickness is 0 0.15 millimeter per tooth. Downstep of two diameter, in this case 40 millimeters at downstep, and this is roughing in mold steel. 
So this is very, very impressive. And the side step is three millimeters. The Q or MRR, material removal rate, at that stage is about 560 cubic centimeter per minute. And we can see that the tool pass, no matter the geometry and no matter the shape of the tool pass, is keeping all the time constant side step, constant down step. Only the feed is changing in order to accommodate constant uh, loads on the tool. And the result is amazing. Here we're going to see how the tool breaks into a thin wall, and this is right, very fine. No, no problem for the tool to do that. And um, the steps are very large. Notice that the holder is all the time collision free from the stock, from the clamps, and from the part. Since the Simatron all the time, the software all the time is checking for uh, collision avoidance and stock update of all the set of operations. And this is the total result. You can see the huge down steps. And all that was removing, let's say, 50% or 75% of the total material to be removed with just within one hour. Okay, let us proceed. Example number two is roughing of a mold plate. In this case, it's more 2.5 axis operation, but the concept remains the same. Same material, same hardness, typical mold steel. The traditional process takes about two hours, and the volume mill complete process, volume mill plus set of free roughs, takes less than one hour. So again, about 50% time saving, even more, give or take. Again, looking at the simulation, left side we will see the traditional, and the right side we will see the volume mill process. Same concept with the clock. Of course, we'll see here different shape of tool pass, different operations, but the concept remains the same. Notice on the right side, the tool is rather small compared to the left side tool. And this is the beauty, because the volume will normally, the solid car by the tool, will take smaller diameter, but still it will cut very fast compared to the traditional which takes longer, bigger diameter tools, but slower cut, or slower material removal rate. The shape of the volume mill uh, operation is very strange to the eye, but yet it's very efficient and safe. And on the right side, the process is complete. When it's complete, the clock will change to red, and again, we can see here even more effectively that more than 50% of the time now on the left side is a waste of time. The machine is crunching money. We are now losing money on the left side compared to the right process. So completing that, we can see that on the right side it took about 48 minutes compared to 2 hours and 20 minutes, give or take. Coming back to our presentation, let us again see a live movie of this plate being cut at um, Iskar showroom. This time we are using a 16 millimeter solid carbide tool, seven flutes. This time the downstep is, 20, is 30 millimeters, which is again two times diameter. The side step is 2 millimeters, and the material removal rate Q is 300 cubic centimeters per minute, which is a huge number compared to the numbers we have seen with the traditional of 50 to 100 or 150. So this is, again, very, very impressive. And no matter the shape of the geometry, the tool pass all the time keeps the same concept, the concept of constant two loads, constant side step, and variable feeds to accommodate this 
best conditions for the solid carbide tool to just crunch those chips most effectively as possible. Since the tool pass is what we call trochoidal or d-slot trochoidal, it has to go in and then backwards and this is done with the special tool pass of volumin, not touching the floor and not harming the uh, flutes and all the amount of the chips are removed just with air and um, we can see the huge amount of, uh, uh, of chips uh, created during this operation and at all times again I'm emphasizing again and again the tool doesn't care what the geometry of the part is because the tool sees all the time almost constant cutting conditions that give the tool the longer tool life and the stable process for optimized uh, results. Here we see another operation coming from the same uh, uh, job. So uh, we have seen first pocket and now comes the second pocket. Notice here for example how our volume um, okay, here we are seeing a drill operation, a pre-drill with coolant for the solid carbide tool to penetrate in and immediately start with the full downstep open a pocket from the full uh, depths. So we don't utilize the solid carbide to drill, even it can, because it's not its uh, best uh, uh, zone. The best zone for these tools are the side cut and not the, the drill operations. So that was the movie of the plate cutting. Back to, this, uh, to the presentation. Uh, let us now, now speak about the implementation. So here we need to look at this typical process in Simatron screen, process manager. We are seeing here a set of rough operations by this customer with different tools going down from 32 millimeter down to 4 millimeter, all are rough, re rough operations. What is interesting here is that the stock is being updated automatically and each procedure takes the stock from its previous uh, process. So this is the traditional uh, process, typically. Now what happens if I want now to introduce the volume, what would I do? Just one, sorry, just one volume operation comes up in front as the first operation, as we have seen in the movie. This operation crunches the most of the material to be removed and it pushes down all this process of re rough procedures but now those re rough procedures see less stock and since the stock is managed by Simatron automatically so rough spiral 4 which was used to be the first operation and now is the second coming after the volume mill sees much less material to remove so it will run faster and the complete total process, or as we see here, is completely much faster than the same process without the volume mill, as we have seen in the movies. So the implementation is that easy. Just insert one volume mill or two volume mill operations at the beginning of the process and just push down all the rest of your procedures. Now comes the question, is it worse time-wise and money-wise? So here comes a specific uh, Excel sheet we developed uh, for you people and this fits every market. You can change um, the, the um, currency based on uh, any country, in this case dollars, but it can be euro, it can be 
uh, Chinese, it can be uh, Japanese, what, whoever uh, is uh, operating this uh, Excel sheet. The upper area uh, gives us uh, three major parameters. The first one is the machine cost per hour, and this is a number that has to be agreed with the user or with the uh, customer. Um, let's say uh, in North America it is uh, 100 dollars per hour, or some may say it's less, so we can reduce the numbers over here, or we can go to the initial cost calculator and operate it from there, and we'll do that just in a minute. The next parameter is the insert tool cost per hour for the traditional operations, which is, for example, $10 per hour for the uh, disposable uh, inserts. And the last parameter is for the solid carbide tool cost per hour for the volumeal operation, and you can see this is very expensive. Going into the details, of the insert uh, and the calculator, we can see over here how these um, costs are being uh, uh, calculated in more details. For example, a solid carbide tool for a diameter 16 millimeter, for example, is $150. Its tool life can be, let's say, 90 minutes. Some will say more, like 120 minutes. Whenever I change this number, it affects immediately the cost per hour. So we are now with $75 cost per hour, but some will say uh, the tool price is not so cheap, it's $200. So I'm going to the extreme, and I don't care. I'll sh show you soon why. So going over here to $200, for a, a single solid carbide tools, we are stabilizing with a cost per hour of $100 per hour for solid carbide, $10 per hour for inserts, and let us say a machine cost per hour of $75. Uh, Harry, could you click that 75 please? Okay. Now we are going back to the calculator. Those numbers are now here, and those are agreed between uh, me and you. Now uh, let us go to our core or cavity uh, component uh, uh, plate. The traditional cut took us uh, 12 hours. Compared to the volume mill, I'm going to in put the manual values, it took us one hour and a half for just vo volume mill operation and four hours and a half for the traditional rerough process, and that totally gave us six hours of process time compared to 12 hour process time of the traditional operation. So we are saving with this process as we have seen six hours. Six hours times $75 per hour, automatically we are saving on the machine cost $450. We are also saving on the inserts a smaller amount of $75 because we are utilizing the inserts just for four hours and a half and not for 12 hours. But the most important thing is that we are wasting $150 dollars, which is one hour and a half times hundred dollars per hour on the solid carbide tool. We are wasting here hundred and fifty dollars, or we could say even we are using a one solid carbide tool per component and then throw it away. Still, we are saving three hundred seventy-five dollars on this just one component. Now, same we can do with the plates, but the idea is the same. So let us now jump into the annual savings. So if I'm a small shop with typical 50 molds per year, 
I'm going to save just on the core cavity if utilizing a volume mill process, I'm going to save 300 hours, which is a month's machine. We just released a machine for one month to stand idle or to bring more job. And we are saving $18,000 on the costs just by introducing the volume mill into the process. Now, if you are a bigger shop, as I know there are in North America, let us take not a bigger, very big number, but a moderate number of 200 molds per year. We already speak of $75,000 savings and 1,200 hours saving. This is already very interesting because more job can come in and we are saving money. But notice, don't be mistaken, we are wasting a lot. We are investing $30,000 in solid carbide tools but yet we are efficient. So this is very challenging and this is very courageous, very interesting. Let us switch back uh, to the presentation no. and no, summarize. You need to add that when you Please. say 200, there are 50 mold components. So the number of molds might be less, but you have a core, you have a cavity, you have some inserts, slides, bigger slides. So this is per component. Let's say 200 components are not big for any uh, medium-sized shop. So you are saying actually the numbers can be bigger? Well, you can't. 200 molds might be a very large shop, but 200 mold components may not be uh, not large. So Too much. This is okay. This 200, when you say 200 is not 200 molds, but it will be 200 mold components. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Alan? Yes. Sorry, I muted you. You can repeat again what you said. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, as I said, 3D system Simatron E volume mill introduces a solution for mold makers. Click that, Harry, please. With a reliable and optimized tool pass, which will give us a faster material removal rate a safe process, and again, this is very important, it's a safe process, easy and fast programming and implementation, and you're going to save time and save money at your shop. So this is a win-win situation. Everybody is winning over here the shop flow customer and Simotron in this case. So that was the presentation and thank you very much and we are listening for your questions. Okay, thank you very much Olan uh, and, and Harry for your help. Uh, that was a really informative presentation. Um, so we've got some questions from our audience. So we're going to start with those. In the meantime, uh, please feel free to submit your own questions by typing them in the uh, question pane that's on the control panel at the right uh, of your screen, and then we'll get answers for all those questions, um, even if we don't get to them while we're on the air. So some questions, if we would run out of time, we'll get those answered uh, at the end of the uh, webinar uh, presentation. Remember, this webinar is being recorded and will be available online. So if you can't stay for the whole session, you can still catch up with it later. So let's go to our first question. And this question uh, popped up, uh, Alon, when um, I think we were still in the simple implementation slide, you know, where you introduced the uh, volume mill um, roughing step here. And the question is, um, where did you get the feed rates and the step overs? 
Okay, thank you, Mark, for the question. Uh, there is an application which is called a mailing advisor, and uh, if you make me presenter, I'll, maybe I make myself a presenter. So I hope you're seeing, uh, are you seeing that, Mark? Yes. Okay, I, I, I so here is the mailing advisor. Yeah, here is the mailing advisor application where you can type in your units, metric or inches, the kind of material you're using, the hardness, the diameter, the number of flutes, uh, length of cut, operation, your part holding, uh, your taper type, is it HSK or taper, and the tool holder, is it uh, end mill holder, hydraulic chuck, ER collet, shrink fit, and so forth, and um, maximum RPM and maximum uh, feed of the machine, and you're getting two sets of numbers, which are the conservative parameters and the aggressive parameters. And for all those, we are seeing two uh, gold numbers. The down step is two times two diameter, and the step over side step, or AE, is 7% of tool diameter, which in, in this case, for 16 millimeter, it's 1.12 millimeter. These are beginner's uh, values. Then the conservative parameters will give us uh, parameters which are moderate. If you are feeling safe and you are more into the application and you already have experience, you can go to the aggressive parameters and of course the material removal rate will be faster over here. So this is an example of how to enter into uh, uh, this world of uh, new parameters. And if I may add, going into Simatron E, what we are seeing here is the feed and spin calculator, which is a very smart dialog, actually. We are seeing here that the number of T's for this example is 7, and the side step was 3 millimeters, and the chip thickness was 0 0.15 mm. Now let's say for one reason I need to change the side step. Please remember the chip thickness was 0 0.15. If I now change the side step to be smaller, to 2 millimeters, and I lock that, the chip thickness got smaller because of what we call the thickness uh, effect, the thinning effect. So uh, this is now we are not utilizing the tool to its effective conditions. So I would now raise the chip thickness back to 0 0.15, and please notice what happens to the feed. The feed now is 4,700. Let us now go to 0 0.15, and when I click that, let us look at the feed, what happens to the feed. So it went up to 5,600. So this calculator helps us very easily to play with the side step, and the chip thickness and the feed. And this is the, the golden triangle that we want to keep the tool manufacturer conditions for chip thickness, but yet play with the side step and get the correct feed. So I hope I could answer um, this uh, uh, question. And uh, this meeting advisor is a free download from the website. Jane okay, Harry. Mark. Okay, I, I just want to make sure we didn't miss uh, that uh, comment from, from Harry. Okay, this question um, asks about the carbide tools, wants to know if they are coated, and if so, what coating? Also, is coolant being used, and if so, what kind? So I think this uh, questioner is referring to some of the videos we saw of the machining operation. Yes. So that will go more into the very specific parameters of the solid carbide tools 
uh, in uh, conjunction with the material of the metal we want to cut and I wouldn't uh, um, uh, uh, put myself in a position to to elaborate on that too much I would say that the tool manufacturers develop or constantly better coatings and uh, uh, better tools I would say for example that the tools are derived from uh, historically from finishing tools but as we see those tools are for roughing so um, uh, the tool manufacturers look all the time how they can minimize the chattering and the vibration by changing the helix angle per flute and changing the uh, position of each flute along the circle, changing it by several degrees and so forth, uh, improving the cut angle and uh, the coating. Normally for steels the coolant will be just air for maybe uh, nickel materials it will be with uh, um, water cooler and um, aluminium water maybe um, that's all about I can say okay that that's uh, that's fair enough um, uh, also, I wanted to add that to to utilize the benefits of volume mill um, it is not necessary that you have to go and buy special tuning for this. Um, most of the very mills, which are uh, uh, regular animals, solid carbide animals, uh, made for that particular material. It could be aluminium or it could be steel. Uh, they are very much enough. You, you, you're not looking for a special tool for volume mill. It is the regular solid carbide animals made for particular type of material with uh, those coatings. So. Okay, got that. Um, question here, I, I know we just talked about um, special tools or not. Um, what Another uh, question from the audience is about the performance if we use titanium tools for machining. Uh, I'm not sure if tools are use maybe as a coating I don't know what do you guys think about that question I think I think the question is for the titanium material okay. not for the titanium tool um, uh, these type of operations of volume mill are very effective for hard materials so titanium is very very good to cut with volume mill of course the tool pass has to be very controlled and no fluctuations in the loads on the tool and this is exactly what the Simatron e volume mill will provide if you try to cut titanium with conventional traditional tool pass you will you will face much much lower material removal rate and the wear is is enormous so I would just emphasize titanium is very good cutting with a volume mill strategy okay um, uh, Alon, there's a couple of questions that are all about the same thing, and they're asking about volume mill as an extra package or uh, additional software or an add-on. So maybe you can tell us uh, how users are able to, um, you know, implement the uh, volume mill option in their systems. Okay, there are two things. Uh, uh, I will leave the the, uh, the pricing or, or the sales part of it to Harry, but on the implementation, once you have that license, the implementation, as I've, I've shown, it's so simple. You just decide where you want to implement the volume mill operation at normally at the beginning of the roughing process and then fill in the rest with your traditional process as you are used to do and that will be the best implementation um, other than that on the sales side Harry maybe you want to add uh, yes to answer the question is is it an add-on yes it is an add-on package uh, we have two modules one for the 
two axes and three axes. The three axes includes both two x and three x. Uh, it is definitely an add-on. Um, whichever customer is interested, they can contact uh, the respective salesperson and they can give you more details. Okay, that I think that's the uh, best answer to to that uh, those that question and similar questions. Um, here's a more a more detailed question about the uh, uh, actual machining process in volume mill. If the effective chip thickness is the same, what is the advantage of chip thinning, i.e., smaller step over with higher feed rate? The chip thinning actually is a result of the geometry when approaching material with very small side steps compared to the tool diameter. Uh, when we get to side steps, uh, 15, 10 percent, 5 percent of the tool diameter, geometrically, and I am show, and I'm showing it actually now on the screen. If you're seeing, uh, the effective chip that we are cutting is less than the feed per tooth, as you supposed to see. Uh, mathematically uh, from the vertical picture. So this derivative means that if we want to be effective, we can increase the feed because if we are thinking that we are cutting with 0 0.25 millimeters per tooth, we are actually cutting with 0 0.15 for a side step of 2 millimeter. This will not be right if we will use here a side step of half diameter or slotting as happens with the traditional tool pass. So once we are dealing with the very small side steps, we can utilize the tool's faster feed and yet be in the safe zone of the cutting. And this is the beauty of this tool pass type. So we are achieving faster feed, faster material removal rate and we are cutting this with very long APs, very, very long down steps. So we are utilizing a very, very long uh, uh, rectangle of area at all times. So we are very effective by uh, uh, removing material. So we are utilizing the expensive solid carbide tool all times. This means we are removing a lot of chips. This means the machine is very effective. This means we are uh, saving money because the machine crunches as much as it can. It doesn't stand idle or it doesn't move, you know, tiny, tiny clean between areas and so forth. It removes the mass of materials almost at all times. Okay. All right. Um, Alon, this next question, um, maybe you'll have a better idea of exactly what the uh, uh, attendee is getting at. The question is, what is the easy way to set the fixture as a check without having to grab each surface individually? Well, this goes into the operation of Simatron E and not into volume mill. Okay. But uh, but uh, as I mentioned, the Simatron E manages the stock and the collision avoidance with the part, with the stock, and with the fixture uh, very easily. So one can define the stock, the part, and fixtures very easily by clicking few uh, clicks, checking surfaces or sets, and uh, more than that will be a training, but uh, it's actually very easy to, to set. Well, okay. If, if the question is from a user, I, I, I uh, suggest the user to call us on the support line, and it is very, very easy to define uh, things, so we can help them out, no problem. Okay. Um, that same attendee also wants to ask the question if volume mill looks ahead for drilled holes to use as start points to minimize ramping? Uh, the answer is yes. 
uh, volume evolved in the years and now we are impl implementing a, a volume in such a way as I showed in the movie of the second cut with the drilling with the coolant so the drilling was a pre-operation for the volume tool for the solid carbide tool to plunge into that hole which is now air and start cutting so we can control volume to go into a specific point or we can uh, set specific areas by volume and then pre-drill over there so either way volume knows the holes and can tune itself to penetrate in those holes as start points the answer is yes okay good Th thank you Alon um, here's another question um, what is the maximum speed given for a feed in a volume mill roughing operation Mm, I, I, I'm honest to say I didn't understand the question. Okay. Um, that might be one that we'll want to explore at the end of the, the webinar then. Because um, I'm not exactly sure either uh, what would be the right way to approach that question. Um, there's another question here. Is What is the difference between volume mill and volume mill Nexion? Does, uh, does that okay. question? Okay. Yes. Volume mill Nexion is the in-house application from Celerative, and volume mill is what we implemented from Celerative into Simatron. So both use the same algorithm. We introduced this, the volume mill into the Simatron, and I emphasized that we are utilizing the stock, the stock structure and the stock up stock usage is part of our process manager. So volume mill will know the stock input and volume mill will update the stock output into the process. So we are actually here at the highest level of implementation of the volume mill into our Simatron E stock process. So I hope I answered the question. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I sounded good to me. <laughs> um, here's another question. Um, is, is this type of application suitable for roughing with end mills such as 1 8 or 1 32 inch diameter tools? Okay, so uh, uh, you are speaking here or the attendee here asks about small diameter tools uh, which are uh, 132 or, or 1 millimeter diameter the answer is yes solid carbide tools are good for uh, these diameters and uh, the volume tool pass as it is so very controlled it will protect the tool from breakage once you try to use this these very small diameter solid carbide tool with a non volume tool pass, either you go very, very slowly or you break the tool immediately. So the only way to use very small diameters is this type of tool pass with the volume uh, approach. Absolutely. Okay, that's good. Um, I think at this point we have just about all the questions answered and uh, we're almost out of time. So I think we're going to wrap up here. And um, again, I want to thank you, Alon and Harry, for presenting your slides and answering our questions this afternoon. Um, for those attending this afternoon's session, um, you can contact Simitron if you'd like more information. And I think we're going to get that contact information up on the screen here in a second. Uh, in the meantime, we certainly appreciate the time you've taken to be with us this afternoon and listen to the live presentation. Um, I hope you found it worthwhile. Uh, thank you for taking part as attendees. And I also want to thank those on the staff who arranged the session and helped it go smoothly. Uh, that's always a challenge when you're working with presenters and organizers who are in different parts of the globe and yet it all went really, really well this afternoon. So again, this uh, 
This concludes our webinar. Um, I wish everybody a great day. This is Mark Albert at Modern Machine Shop Magazine signing off. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Harry, Lisa, Mark.